Right behind me, we have our raw bar. People eat them, we save the shells, and then they get repurposed to provide habitat for more oyster growth. So it's sort of like you know, upcycling and recycling. I see a future where nature and people can thrive in our cities. Oyster reefs, eelgrass beds, salt marshes, maritime forests are making up more of our shorelines in our cities because these are places that can provide recreational opportunities, points of access for people, but they can also make our cities more adaptable to climate change. Oysters are filter feeders, so in order to get their food, they are basically constantly opening their shell and drawing water in, in hopes of getting algae, phytoplankton, other particles that they can use for food. And in that process, they're helping to clear up the water, and they remove a lot of the suspended particles, they remove excess nutrients, and then can deposit that into the sediment and bury it, or modify it in a way that it can be removed from the system through bacterial processes. If you put a oyster reef 20 or 30 feet from the bottom of, oyster, of, of New York Harbor, the ability to really intercept those waves is pretty minimized. So it's really about finding the places in the harbor where you can place reefs in front of soft shorelines, things like your marsh edges. And those are places where there's more opportunities for an incoming wave to sort of get dampened as it passes over that reef, and then as a result, deposit more of the sediment the sand and silt and clay and other materials, which can then help that marsh stay healthier. There was this like grassroots effort that started in the early 2000s, late 90s. It was called oyster gardening. People in the community would throw bags of oysters over the sides of piers. So they'd put a rope, mesh bag of some oysters, but like they would just throw them over into whatever their nearest waterfront was. And then they'd go there once a month, maybe check on them, count them up, how many are alive, how many are dead, maybe they'd measure them. Right now the practice is like very much up and up in partnership with state agencies, making sure it's being done the right way. We are in lovely Chelsea Market right now in Manhattan. This is the Lobster Place Seafood Hall. We were one of the first to, to join the Billion Oyster Project shell collection program. We sell around 20,000 oysters a week here, so we have a lot of shell, and they have a lot of shell requirements. Started uh, donating shell to them, and now we also do their shell collection. So we have a truck that goes around the city and collects shells from all 80 participating restaurants. A lot of restaurants pay private waste removal services, you know, when they throw out their garbage, and you pay by the amount of bags that you throw out. So more shells equals more garbage, it costs them money. But instead we kind of repurpose these, these shells, and it, it does a good thing for the environment. So the Billion Oyster Project is kind of a, a very symbiotic relationship for us. We have oyster shell waste. They need oyster shell to help build these reefs that they put together. So we've, we've got the, the product and the oysters will attach themselves to the empty shells and they provide a substrate basically for new oysters to grow upon. Most of our shoreline along Hudson River Park has this hard bulkhead, it's a seawall, and it's also historic. So this particular area, which is landfill as opposed to a pier, actually does not have that historic structure. So we were able to deviate from the standard treatment and build uh, sloped edges on both sides of the peninsula, one side for habitat and the other side for public access. I think there's a lot of signs that we know that oysters can grow and survive in New York Harbor. And I think the question is about whether or not we can either do our restoration efforts to the right level or in the right places where we can actually establish self-sustaining, reproducing populations that can survive on their own. 
we really envision a city where it's, it's livable for people, it's livable for nature, and that makes it much more adaptable and resilient in the face of climate change.